Look who's with us. David Barnson, one of our favourites. Aforementioned man. <laughs> the, yes. uh, the aforementioned man, that's right. What are those numbers and, uh, uh, of online trading Friday and the expected date? What's that tell you about the consumer? Well, first of all, I have a daughter and a wife, so I'm a bit of an expert in this from a distance. And uh, I want to be very clear for our listeners. This is the most important thing I will say today. Big shopping consumer activity does not create a strong economy. It reflects one. Oh, exactly. People sure. spend when they have earnings, when they have savings, when they have productivity. You must first produce before you can consume. That's all this is. So it looks good, doesn't it? It certainly does. It reflects well on the consumer. And the e-commerce people have done a great job of marketing this year. They sure have. And let's go back to this. Uh, Trump's threatening 100% tariffs against several BRICS countries <laughs> if they abandon the dollar as a reserve currency. Off the top of your head, what do you think of that? Uh, I think it's mostly posturing. I'm not being critical of the president-elect, but I just want to be clear. Nobody's abandoning the dollar as a reserve currency. Some have minuscule amount of transactions they want to do, yep. but then they still have to convert it back to hold dollars. The way to make the dollar the reserve currency is to have the best currency, to have the most stable monetary fiscal policy, get our house in order. We control what people do with the dollar. They don't. At this moment, the U.S. dollar is at not necessarily an all-time high. But it's very strong. You look at the dollar index, it's way up there. Yeah, near most currencies it is. And that's a reflection of a lot of things that most people have gotten wrong. The dollar's in a strong place. Yeah, we got it right. Thanks, David. Stay with me for the hour, please. I've got to look back at November because that was a terrific month, especially for the small caps. Yeah, it sure was. Small caps are up over 11% on the month. Ooh. And uh, you basically had the best month of the year, November, but the Dow was up over 7%, the S&P almost 6%. There wasn't a risk asset that wasn't up. And I want to point out, bonds rallied a lot, too. The yields yep. came down yep. quite a bit, yep. all those who've been worried about yields going higher. And look on the board now. We've got the, yeah, there's your yields, so 423 on the 10 years, same on the two-year about that. Yeah. But if you look at the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, as of now, all in the green, it's December the second, first trading day of the new month. Looks like we're carrying on from November. Yeah, I mean, you have the market up about 26% on the year. It was up over 20% last year. This is the ninth best performance of all time through the end of November. It's the Trump rally, isn't it? That's well, it this is. November, well, obviously, it all started after the election. And the thing is, it's not technology. Financials and industrials were the big leaders. Right. We've had huge performance this year with energy. A lot of the uh, policy expectations going forward. You wouldn't see this rally if Harris had won? Uh, uh, no, you would not. <laughs> Thank you very much, Edith. You kept that one nice and short. <laughs> okay. i got to start with Intel when we look at individual stocks. The CEO, Pat Gelsinger, announced his retirement. Taylor, that's sending the stock, what, 3% higher? Not mm -hmm. bad. I mean, Pat Gelsinger joined, rejoined Intel from VMware back in 2021. He laid out a big five-year plan. We're about three or four years into that five-year vision. Frankly, this was just an uphill battle. Intel just struggled. I don't think through any fault of Pat Gelsinger's own. He's talked a lot about how this was a really challenging year, and he tried, but at some point, you just got to walk away. Can they turn it around, David? It's going to be very difficult. I wish they weren't relying on this corporate welfare from the CHIPS Act, mm. but they have a, a tough road ahead, and Pat was a, a very gifted CEO. Couldn't get it done. Maybe somebody will buy him. Uh, the problem is it's just so expensive that they're going to want it cheaper if they're going to buy it. But then the Intel shareholders are going to say, no, let's write it out. <laughs> it's not overly indebted. They can ride this out. That's a tough case right there. You don't think much to NVIDIA, do you, David? Oh, it's an incredible company. I think very highly of it. It's just in the price. It's trading at 65 times earnings. And uh, Broadcom is a significant competitor. It's done very well there. But this whole space is going to be riddled with dead, bankrupt companies. I shall remember that. Yes, you will. A few months from now, perhaps. Oh, I didn't say a few months. <laughs> it will take a while. Got it. You remember dot .com, don't you? Oh, 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 I was there, baby. I was there. <laughs> David, you brought your stock picks. Uh, no, that dividend picks, correct? Dividend growth picks. Dividend growth picks. <laughs> Get this right. This is the first day, time we've ever discussed this. Of so, course, yeah. of course, of course. Johnson & Johnson, make your case. I, pur I purposely picked Johnson & Johnson and Pepsi for the same reason. I wanted to pick a couple that aren't up huge on the year. We have so many names, these financials, energy. Mm -hmm. It's been a very, very good year for our dividend portfolio. Johnson & Johnson and Pepsi are two names people might want to consider if they think the market's a little frothy, if they think things have gotten ahead of themselves. They're low beta, very conservative. They're not as volatile names rock-solid balance sheets, 
dependable earnings. Both of them yield about 3.3%. Both of them have raised the dividend for Johnson Johnson over 60 years, Pepsi over 50 years in a row. So it's just a nice, stable, conservative way to be invested in stocks. So you suggest that PepsiCo and Johnson Johnson could give you a solid dividend, 3% and some growth, and at the same time, maybe a capital gain. Absolutely, because if the dividend's growing, it means the earnings are growing and the stock price ends up catching up. So that's our whole philosophy, Stuart, is the dividend indicates where the stock price is going, not vice versa. Okay, David, thanks very much. Stay there. I've got more for you later. Labor unions celebrating... Trump's Labor Secretary pick. That would be Congresswoman Laurie Chavez de Mima. Uh, what can you tell me about it, Laura? Um, de Mima uh, is a selection that is being celebrated by the unions because she was one of three Republicans in the House to endorse the PRO Act. That would allow some independent contractors to unionize. Also served as mayor of Happy Valley, Oregon. One term in the House. Just lost her Oregon seat by fewer than 10,000 votes. And if she is confirmed... She could speak for some of those working class voters, the union voters that helped deliver for Trump. So Republican voice pro union unexpected in such a Republican pick. Yeah. Uh, David, what do you think to this? Uh, She's not pro worker. She's pro union bosses. And there's a huge difference. These this AB five in California took away the rights of independent contractors. She was vehemently for it. Uh, Everything she stands for is uh, not allowing right to work states. That's it. So there's a huge divide in our country. We talk about the working class. Some are pro union bosses. Some are pro workers. I think President Trump in his first term was pro worker. She, to me, represents union bosses. And I, I, this is the pick I'm most against of all of them. It was a strange pick indeed. Yes. Right, David, thank you. David Barnes is still with me. David, uh, what do you expect from the remainder of Trump, uh, of uh, Biden's term in office. I think he's got 49 days left. What do you expect to happen? You know, Charlie made reference to the beginning of our show. I think he is going to do more pardons. I think there will be some more probably at the very end of the, the uh, next 40, 50 days. Well, pardon himself and his family? I don't think he will, um, but I think that there are uh, generally at the end of presidencies they do. controversial pardons, and I think there will be no affection with Kamala Harris. All right. All right, David, thanks very much indeed. Thanks for being here as well. We appreciate thanks it. so much.